In this video, we'll be taking a look at Illustrator's Bezier Pen Tool. We can access the Bezier Pen Tool by hitting P on the keyboard. Um, it is over here, just underneath our selection tools. And we can see by clicking and holding down on the Pen Tool that it has some other tools that are associated with it. The Add Anchor Point, Delete Anchor Point, and then just the Anchor Point Tool. So we'll be taking a look at these as we work through this video. So the Pen Tool is used for drawing any type of organic, geometric shape and it's really important to understand how it works if you are using it in Illustrator. Some of you may not need to use it but it's definitely important if you plan on drawing up your own graphics. So before you start using the pen tool it's important to check the settings that you've got for it and coming up to the control panel here I can see that um, at the moment there is currently no fill set for the pen tool and that's usually what you want because the pen tool is often used to trace over the top of some sort of template and we don't want to cover that template as we work um, and then we've got the stroke color to the right here and generally I have that on something bright such as magenta so that it stands out against the background that I'm drawing against We've also got the stroke width. Now I'm just going to leave it at one point, which is pretty standard with a uniform profile. So the way we use the pen tool is coming across to the artboard, I can just click anywhere on this artboard and it drops an anchor point. And so at this point, I haven't actually drawn anything on the page. All I've done is drawn an anchor point or dropped an anchor point. Now, if I move my way across to another part, of the artboard and then click and release with my mouse, I drop a second anchor point and we get what's known as a line segment running between these two anchor points. And so as I continue around, I can click and release and I just continue to drop these anchor points creating more line segments as I go. These series of line segments are known as a path. So with these paths, we have what are known as open paths or closed paths. So at the moment what I've got is an open path which I would generally use for detail and brush type work, um, something that I might use over the top of a shape. Um, if I wanted to actually create a closed shape or a closed path, what I need to do is work my way back around to that first anchor point that I dropped when I created or when I started the path. So if I come here, you can see when I hover over the top of that first anchor point, I get that little circle that appears in the lower right corner of my pen tool and I get the word anchor coming up there telling me that it's um, hovering over an anchor. And so now when I click and release on that, I've now got a closed path. And so with this closed path, I can come in and I can change the, the fill color of it. I can come across to the properties panel to do that. Um, if I want to, we can see there that I've got the um, fill option there. And I can also do it if I change to my selection tool um, and then just click on the shape. We can see that I've also got those options up here in the control panel. So if I click on the drop down here, I can add that fill color inside of the shape. If I wanted to edit the shape after I've drawn it, then there's a couple of tools I can use to edit the shape. Some um, of these are available underneath the pen tool. So I've got the add and delete anchor point tools. And so the delete anchor point tool is what we can use to come in and fine tune our shape after we've drawn it. We might want to remove anchors that we've dropped or alternatively we can come in and we can add extra anchors. So I can click on the path here to add an extra anchor. If I miss the path, I'll get this warning telling me that I can't drop an anchor outside of a line segment. So I need to actually make sure that I drop it on a line. Once I've dropped those, if I wanted to change the position of any of these anchors, then I can come across and I can use my direct selection tool. So this Direct selection tool is great for coming in and fine tuning the shapes after we've drawn them because you may not get the exact shape when you do the pen tool on the first pass. You may need to come in and edit it slightly. You can see there when I'm clicking on these sharp angles here, I've also got the ability to round off some of these corners by clicking and dragging that little dot there, the little um, node that I can drag in. All right, but I'll just command Z to um, undo that. And then the other tool that we've got for editing this shape after I've drawn it underneath the pen tool, if I come back across, you've got this anchor point tool. So this anchor point tool is great for going in and curving off any sharp edges that you might have created. So we can see here that I've got this sharp edge. If I click and hold down on that anchor with this anchor point tool and drag, I get these handles that come off that anchor. And so I'm able to come in and change any sharp angle to a curve. And then I can actually adjust these curves independently. If I want, I can grab the handles here 
to adjust the curves. I can actually click on the curve itself as well to move that around. But we'll take a look in a second how we can create these curves um, as we draw. So yeah, they're the key tools that we use when we're working with the pen tool. Initially drawing the shape with the pen tool, possibly adding or deleting anchor points, converting anchor points with the anchor point tool, and then also using the direct selection tool if we need to come in and change the position of individual anchor points. All right, great. So when it comes to creating curved lines as we draw, I'll jump across back into the pen tool. I'll hit P on the keyboard actually to, to do that. And then before I start drawing with that, I'll make sure that I turn off my um, fill. So I'll turn the fill off and then I'll just control or command to click off to the side to deselect the shape um, to create my new shape. And with this new shape, this time what I'm gonna do is when I click, I'm not gonna release on the page, I'm gonna click, keep holding the mouse down and then I'm gonna drag. And so what's happening now is I'm getting these handles that are coming out from my anchor point and then I'll just release. And so I still haven't drawn anything as yet. We're getting a preview of the curve that I'm about to draw, but all I've done is dropped an anchor point, just like in the previous shape, but this anchor point has some handles coming off. So if I come across and I'll do that move again, clicking, holding, dragging out, and then releasing. So that gives me the handles on that curve, on that anchor point, which creates a curve. And so I can continue to do that click and dragging and then releasing. And so basically as I click and I drag and release, the further I pull these handles away from the anchor, the steeper that curve becomes, steeper and steeper and steeper. And then if I wanna change the direction of the curve, I can actually pull this front handle up and you can see the back handle is moving in the opposite direction and it's pulling the curve down. So you've got this motion of pulling away from your anchor and then also changing the direction of the handle to change the direction of the curve. And it's really a case of mastering these moves when you're trying to create um, these shapes with curves. It's getting used to this motion of clicking and dragging and knowing how far to pull that handle away from the anchor point that where you've dropped it. Now it is a little bit tricky when you first start doing this. It's kind of counterintuitive because you are drawing backwards in a way. You're dropping an anchor point and then you're looking at the line that's happening behind that anchor point and determining its um, depth and also the direction. Um, and you're also considering what's happening in front because you've got the handle that's coming out in front here and we can control that. We'll have a look at the second video of the pen tool at how we can manipulate this as we're drawing. So if I continue to work my way around, just clicking and dragging with this one. And so this is gonna give me a shape that has curves the whole way around. All right, so back to my original anchor point, I'll drag some handles off that one as well. And we can use exactly the same tools to edit this shape. So I can come in here and I can add, delete, and I can convert these anchors with the anchor point tool. So because I've created a series of um, anchors that have handles coming off them, I can take them back to being the sharp angles if I want with this anchor point tool, just by clicking and releasing on them. And so when I, every time I click and release on an anchor, I get this sharp angle that appears. And so we can see now that I'm getting rid of all of the handles from the anchor points that I dropped and I'm ending up with a shape that just has sharp angles. Cool, and then I can always come back in and bring these curves back in if I want to by clicking and dragging on the anchor points to pull those handles out. Great, so that's just a bit of an intro into um, the way that the pen tool creates our closed and open paths. In the next video, what we'll look at is some of the techniques that we can use when we're creating these lines and how we can manipulate the line as we're working. See you in the next video.